What Color Is Your Parachute was a popular career Bible back in the 1970s and 1980s, but who knew that a new 2019 edition was out? Well, it's chock full of good advice, so let's talk about how that book and my outlook on building a nursing career synergistically mesh, right here on episode 190 of The Nurse Keith Show. Hello and welcome to The Nurse Keith Show. I am so grateful that you're listening, whether it's your first time tuning in or you've been hanging out with me for months or years here on the airwaves and in the ethers. Thanks for being part of the growing Nurse Keith Nation. This podcast, as always, is all about you and your nursing career, and I'm here to share education, inspiration, and ideas that can get you moving in a positive and inspired direction. And do you know what? Now, in 2019, I'm going to be adding some awesome value to the show by interviewing several outstanding nurse visionaries every month, and you can look forward to a break from me and the singular wise voices of some of the most successful nurses and non-nurses in the world. Meanwhile, if you want to see the show notes for this episode, you can follow along at nursekeith.com forward slash episode 190. And before we dig into the meat of the episode, I just have a few asks of you, dear listener. Consider becoming a patron of Nurse Keith Show, just like other listeners have done because they value the show and they want to help me produce and distribute it. When you pledge, you get the satisfaction of helping produce and support the Nurse Keith Show, but you also get some pretty cool gifts and premiums from little old me. So head over to patreon.com forward slash Nurse Keith. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Nurse Keith to read all about it. That's my sincere ask of you today, so let's jump into the studio and dig right into today's topic. You know, being a nurse is a great avocation, and for most people in most circumstances, it can be a pretty awesome career. I know there are exceptions, but a lot of people make a great career for themselves. And when you're trying to build that career and create the work style and the lifestyle that will get you where you want to go in life and work, things can get kind of confusing. However, there are lots of resources like me, like this podcast, like other nursing podcasts that are out there, books, blogs. And speaking of books, we are going to dive a little bit into the book, What Color Is Your Parachute? Back in the mid-80s, when I was a art school dropout with a high school diploma, I was actually the assistant manager of a Walden Books in downtown Philadelphia on Chestnut Street. Let's hear it for Philly. And this book, What Color Is Your Parachute, was on the shelves a lot, and a lot of people bought it. And being a snarky, young non-professional in my mid-20s, even though I was the manager of a bookstore, I kind of looked askance at all these career books. It just seemed kind of weird to me. And I wish I had read it back then, because it actually would have really helped me get out of the mire I was stuck in as an art school dropout with a high school diploma, not knowing what I wanted to do with my life, only knowing that I'd come back from a year in Europe and I was miserable and had no idea what was going to happen next. What Color Is Your Parachute was first published, well, self-published in 1970, and in 1972, a publisher picked it up. And you know what? It has been revised consistently ever since and is now available in 22 languages. I had no idea. I thought that book was in the career advice dustbin, and I am happy to report that sitting there inside my Kindle is the 2019 version of this book. And I am actually quite excited about what I've read so far. So excited, I haven't even finished the book yet, and I had to come talk to you about it. So Richard Nelson Bowles, if that is the correct pronunciation of his name, 
he has been obviously updating this book, watching the trends, watching what has happened since he started this journey in 1970, when the career and work world was, well, let's say significantly different than it is now. Here we are in the 21st century, and he has not stayed stuck in the 1970s, thank God. He has actually leaped forward into the 21st century, and much to my relief, his recommendations and advice are actually pretty aligned with my own outlook as a holistic career coach for nurses and healthcare professionals. How about that? So the first chapters of the book that I've plowed through and highlighted on my Kindle because there was so much value there is that those old job market strategies that we used in the set, well, not me, but we, the collective we, used back in the late 20th century, a lot of those don't work anymore in this highly digitized, super connected world where everything is done online and the job search process has changed in fairly drastic ways and some things are also the same. Of course, it's all about work. It's all about finding something you can do to put bread and food on the table. And it's also about finding something that will fulfill you and satisfy you. That is where the rubber hits the road. And that's where a lot of people get stuck. A lot of nurses, that includes you, dear listener, reach out to me because they send out application after application after resume after resume and cover letter, and they never hear back. They feel like these online applications through either corporate websites or LinkedIn or whatever, that their resumes and their applications go into some digital black hole, never to be seen again, and they're almost never acknowledged. No one ever reaches out generally and says, hey, we got your resume. Thanks so much. We'll be in touch. So. You're sending out resumes into the world and never hearing anything back. And it feels like you are lost in space. And you know, they say the rings of Saturn are made of lost airline luggage and socks that have disappeared in the dryer. But now I am deciding that perhaps the rings of Saturn are also made of resumes and electronic job applications that have been summarily ignored. Anyway, next time you got your telescope out, look at Saturn and figure out if your resume is revolving up there so many millions of miles away. So here's a quote from Mr. Bowles about the traditional approach versus his quote unquote parachute approach. He says, if you've tried as hard as you can to find a job and nothing is working, stop looking for explanations. The remedy is staring you in the face you need to switch approaches. This meshes perfectly with what I've been telling my clients forever and ever, and most of them do listen to me, thankfully enough. And, you know, the remedy is staring you in the face because we all know that popular 20th, 21st century adage that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results. Well, this is a place where sometimes people demonstrate that type of behavior, banging their head against a door that doesn't even want to open or against a wall where you can't even find the door to get a foot inside so you can even talk to a real person. So the traditional approach, according to Mr. Bowles and me, actually, I'm so thankful to say that, is that the first step is you look at job postings, usually online, but sometimes in print or trade journals or something like that. You send in an application and or a resume and a cover letter. You wait for responses, which often don't come. And then you rinse and repeat, as my old friend and podcast buddy Kevin Ross likes to say. Yes, this is an old school approach. It works sometimes for some people. But we also need to think about how we need to retool what we do for the 21st century, and that is where What Color Is Your Parachute, and I must say Nurse Keith Coaching, comes in. 
The first thing, according to Mr. Bowles, and this also aligns with what I do with my clients when they first sign up for me, is that you have to figure out who you are, whether you have the help of a professional like me or Mr. Bowles or not. You have to know what makes you tick. What are your gifts? What are your strengths? And then you go out looking for the organizations that match your interests and your skills. That takes a lot of work, a lot more work than just responding to ads that you find willy-nilly on the internet. His other piece of advice goes along with something that I've said many times and that's in my book, Savvy Networking for Nurses, is that you don't necessarily need to wait till a company or organization or facility you admire or want to work for has a vacancy. You can try your darndest, and it sometimes work to find a bridge person, that's what Mr. Bowles calls it, who can get you in the door and in front of a influencer or power broker. Yeah, it's hard. Yes, it's out of the box. This is guerrilla networking at its best. And I recommend actually a marriage of the traditional approach and the parachute approach because sending out resumes is fine. You can keep doing that because it might work. The more lines you put in the water, the more lobster traps you drop down to the bottom of the ocean, the more fish or lobsters you are going to catch. So remember, from the perspective of Mr. Bowles, who you are precedes what you are and what you're going to do. And now we're going to take a pause for the cause of our very generous sponsor, Rasmussen College at R-A-S-M-U-S-S-E-N dot E-D-U. They have an awesome, flexible online registered nurse to Bachelor of Science in Nursing Bridge program, also known as RN to BSN. It's designed for working registered nurses who want to earn their BSN while balancing family, work, and school. The program is accredited by the Commission on Collegiate Nursing Education, and it's offered through subscription-based pricing, which means you pay one price, $4,250 per six-month term, plus your books, of course, and you can complete as many courses as you want in that amount of time, and most people finish the program in three terms. They offer eight start dates per year. And their RN to BSN program is a competency-based education program, and that means your learning is prioritized over time, and it will help you have more control over your life and your studies and your work so you can strategize about how you're going to get all this stuff done on top of your regular life. The curriculum prioritizes expanding leadership skills and QSEN, which is quality and safety education for nurses. Those competencies are super important, and they provide innovative student support, a 24-hour call center, help and assistance in the library, tutoring, and you can learn more by visiting Rasmussen. Dot edu, that is R-A-S-M-U-S-S-E-N dot E-D-U. My sincere thanks and gratitude to the awesome people at Rasmussen College. And we're back and we're talking here on episode 190 of the Nurse Keith Show about what color is your parachute, an old career Bible that has been updated for the 21st century here in 2019. And according to Mr. Bowles, the traditional approach consists of 11 parts. And he assigns percentages based on research that's been done on how successful those strategies are. And we're going to run through them really quick. And these will also be in the show notes at nursekeith.com forward slash episode 190. The first is looking for jobs on the internet, and that works an average of 4% of the time. (laughs) Posting or mailing your resume to employers works about 7% of the time. Answering newspaper ads, does anybody answer newspaper ads anymore, works about 5% of the time. That percentage is higher, 24 to 25%, but that's for low-wage non-professional positions, which will not help a nurse or healthcare professional. Using a private employment agency results about 
5% of the time in terms of success, but again, up to 24% for low wage and low skill positions. Responding to ads in professional journals also results in about 7% success. And something I've never heard of, if any of you have heard of this, please email me and let me know, job hunting clubs. He talks about them in the book. I have no idea what they are or where they exist, but there's a 10% success rate in these job hunting clubs, whatever they are. State and federal employment offices give about a 14% success rate, which isn't bad compared to these other strategies. And physically going to places where employers pick up workers is great for tradespeople, construction workers, people who hang out like in day labor places or a trade union hall. That, again, doesn't work for nurses, but it has about a 22% success rate, which is pretty impressive if you're a plumber or a construction worker or a carpenter. Directly asking people you know for job leads Asking where are they hiring and where can I apply has a 33% average success rate. So talking to the people in your network matters. That includes your friends, your family, your banker, your neighbors, your insurance agent. They don't have to work in healthcare. And this has a five times rate of success over mailing out or sending out a resume. Talking to people and networking works and the data proves it, according to Mr. Bowles. And I hear clapping and cheering in the background because that makes me really happy. Now, literally, literally knocking on an employer's door has a 47% rate of positive outcomes. Usually though, here's the caveat, with employers with less than 25 employees. So for these big healthcare facilities, Not as much of a success rate, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't do some Nurse Keith coaching branded guerrilla networking and get out there and pound the pavement and knock on those doors. Now, this is weird. This is the 11th one. Using the yellow pages, I haven't had yellow pages in my house for like, I don't know, 15 years. It can work up to 65% of the time, but this means finding the viable employers, reaching out, paying a visit getting informational interviews, and exploring where they are in terms of hiring and the candidates they're looking for. I don't think the Yellow Pages is going to bring a healthcare provider or a nurse any closer to finding a job, but hey, you never know. Now I want to talk about my three-legged stool approach, which some of you have heard before. And this three-legged stool is very simple. And It's not that kind of stool, you nurses who do colonoscopies and such. It's a stool you sit on. Anyway, this three-legged stool. You know a three-legged stool will not stand unless you have all three legs, and that goes for your job search process. So leg one is making sure everything in your nursing career toolbox is ready for prime time. Your resume, your cover letter, your business card, your LinkedIn profile, your network, and your skills. That's the leg that is just the basic stuff that makes up who you are and how you get out in the world looking for work. Leg two is doing what we've been talking about, applying for jobs, sending out applications and resumes, doing those things that most people do to find a job and usually get frustrated because it doesn't work all the time. Part three is the multifaceted part that it completely aligns with what color is your parachute and Mr. Bull's parachute approach. This means using LinkedIn and social media platforms to meet like-minded professionals, using those connections and networks to find a bridge person where you can get your foot in the door or get in the side door or the back door or break a window and get in there, whatever you need to do to find out how to make yourself the most attractive candidate possible for the employer you're seeking to work for. Now, if you want to 
go back to school, maybe to get a master's or a PhD, or you want to change nursing specialties, the first thing to do is make sure you understand that that is a thing you really want to do. And informational interviews and conversations with people who do those things successfully is what you need to do. This way, you can learn how they got where they are, what the pitfalls are and were, what they recommend you do, and you can learn from their mistakes and not reinvent the wheel and get a handle on how to be successful in this process. So this third leg is about due diligence. It's about hard work. It's about guerrilla networking, and it's making sure you're not making a blind choice to figure out what you want. You're actually doing what you need to do to find out if this thing is what you want to do and figuring out how to do the work to get what you want. So in my brand of career coaching and in the world and cosmology of Mr. Bulls and what color is your parachute, self-inventory and self-assessment and self-exploration are key. And that is what I do with my clients when they first sign up. And we continue to assess because people change over time. I've talked about SWOT analysis strategies. I've talked about diving deep into figuring out who you are and what you want. So when you learn more about yourself, when you recognize and acknowledge the things that light you up, that light your fire, that float your boat based on your strengths and your skills and your interests and your goals, that gives you the picture in your mind. And then you can focus your job search more acutely on what you actually want and not just apply to every job that pops up on your desktop or on your your laptop or your phone. Knowing what you want means you can target the organizations that want people like you And you can also learn how to be a better interviewee and sell yourself to these organizations because you understand what they want, you understand what they're looking for, and you can speak their language. Mr. Bowles also recommends that you use periods of unemployment or underemployment for you per diem nurses out there who want to find more work to gain understanding of what you really want in the next chapter and not just grab the next shiny object. And we've done a podcast about shiny object syndrome in your nursing career and make sure you know you're going in the right direction. In Mr. Bull's words from this 2019 edition of What Color Is Your Parachute, he says, use this opportunity. Make this not only a hunt for a job, but a hunt for a life, a deeper life, a victorious life, a life you're prouder of. I'm going to read that again because I like it so much. Use this opportunity. Make this not only a hunt for a job, but a hunt for a life, a deeper life a victorious life, a life you're prouder of. There are many more parallels and comparisons that I could make between the what color is your parachute approach and the nurse Keith approach. This is just the beginning of how we can dig deeper. I want you to do your due diligence. I want you to set yourself up for success in this 21st century milieu and realize that some of the old approaches may work sometimes, but they won't work all the time. So you need to elevate, you need to innovate, you need to be a gorilla out there and really fight the good fight to create the world and the life and the career that you really want. So what are you going to do? You are going to get started down a new career path to satisfaction and success. And whether you do that with my assistance, or you do that by reading books like What Color Is Your Parachute? Or anything else you can do to make sure you are pointed in the right direction. That is what you need to do. We all need a compass in our lives. We need a moral compass, but we also need a compass that will help us choose a life path and a career path that can bring us some joy 
that can help us feel good about ourselves, that can utilize our education and our life experience to bring us forward to capitalize on what we're good at, to capitalize on the personality traits that we hold that really move other people and help us be the best people we can be when we're out in the world, whether it's with patients, doing research, being an educator, being a nurse entrepreneur, whatever it happens to be, finding our joy, finding our passion means also feeling inspired and feeling that we can have what we want, we can create the careers that we want, and we can move forward in our lives and our careers in a way that feels right, that we're on the right track, we're going in the direction we need to go, and that is where the satisfaction and the happiness and joy and the feeling of success, personal and professional success, is born. Well, there you have it. Thanks for listening to episode 190 of The Nurse Keith Show. I hope you feel uplifted and empowered from this episode, and I encourage you to take inspired action every day in the interest of your professional satisfaction and career development. The Nurse Keith Show is edited and produced by Tim Hollowell of the thepodcastinggroup.com and his awesome team. And social media and promotion are handled by the wonderfully capable, kind, and skilled Mark Cappy Spiesen. I want you to stay positive, care for yourself and others, take inspired action in the interest of your career, and tune in again as we explore how to take your life and your career to the next level. Be well, dig deep, seek joy, keep in touch, and adios till next time from beautiful Santa Fe, New Mexico. 